So Anonymous says, Dear Gabby and Allison, my partner and I are in college and have been together for nearly two years. They are the best thing that's ever happened to me, and I can't imagine my future without them. I am Indian and they are American. In my culture, girls are usually married between the ages of 25 and 28. I have started seriously thinking about our future. The last time I asked them about their future plans, they said they only wanted to get married after they turned 30. And since they are two years younger than me, this does not work for me. Do you have any advice on how to explain my point of view to them without making them feel pressured? I've been following both of you since your BuzzFeed days, and I love you guys. You inspired me to come out to my mom and start going to therapy. I'm really grateful to Gabby for being so open about their queerness, and it makes me feel less weird about my own. I love Allison and find her voice incredibly soothing. Aww. Thank you for everything. I'm going to send that to the voiceover agency that didn't want me as a client. You pass on me. Well, people think I'm soothing. Yeah, exactly. Allison for the blank meditation app, which we won't promote here. But this is a tough one. Cultural issues within couples is always going to be tricky territory. I think that this is a two prong problem. One is that. It's a cultural difference because I think in America, I will say in certain parts of America and in certain cultures of America, in white middle class to upper class culture, people are getting married later. Mm -hmm. And that is because of not having a lot of money, having student loan debt, lower wages, more options, dating apps. I mean, you could go on and on with the research about why that is. Also, homeownership being more unattainable, et cetera, et cetera. But this also has to do with a person's individual readiness to be married. So like, why is their thing that they have to be over 30? Is it, are they like my, one of my sister's friends was like, I just want to be done with med school before I get married or like, you know, had that sort of time frame. And so like, why do they want to wait until they're over 30? I also think like sometimes you say that like if you're 22, you go, I don't want to get married till I'm 30. And then you don't realize that 30 is like so far away. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I don't even think these people are 22 yet. That's the other part of this. Right. You're very young. You're in college and your partner's two years younger than you. Right. Well, that, that could be 22 and 20 or 23 and 21. It's so hard because I when I was younger, I hated when people talked down to me because of my age. I know, I know. And then here's the problem is that so many of them were right. Oh, they were <laughs> always right. <laughs> That's the problem. I had this boyfriend who was such a dick and he would always be like, he's 10 years older than me. He'd always be like, wait until you're my age. Wait until you're my age. I'd be like, fuck you, dude. Now I'm the age that he was when we were dating. And I'm like, that guy sucked, but he was 100% right about everything. Because <laughs> <laughs> the issue is like, Things are going to change so much. So you're mm-hmm. you're worrying about this problem. Like if I would say if you were old, a little older. Right. And you knew that you had completely different plans, like right, timelines, right, right. then that's a problem. And if you can't come to an agreement on a timeline, then you need to go your separate ways. But when you're this young, it's sort of like there are so many variables and just the possibility of even staying together Anyway, another is, three years, another, like, you know, it's, it is tough. Mm-hmm. But I also think that you want your partner to understand where you're coming from in general on things, right? Yes. So I I mean, what does it look like just to ha- to almost say what you just said to us, <laughs> you know? Right, right. Like, it doesn't need to be this huge sit down, drawn out, long mm-hmm. thing. I think you can just say like, And maybe it does need to be that. I don't know. Like maybe it does need to be this longer conversation, but I think it is like completely valid and probably really important to be like, can I explain to you where I'm coming from when I think about our future and when I talk about our future? Right. Or can I explain to you about my culture? Like, yeah, can I, cause not where you're coming from in general. So communication, like being able to hear each other out and being able to compromise huge. And also being able to understand that like, even if you, can't fully understand that other person's experience you take it in as like fact and reality and like and like a part of the relationship like i you know for mal is a trans masculine person i you know am more towards like non-binary we're non-binary in different ways and so i'm never gonna like fully understand mal's experience 
And if they tell me stuff or talk to me about it, like, and they're worried about certain things, you know, maybe they're worried about stereotypes or maybe they're worried about like the way they're treated in bathrooms or whatever. Like I can't be inconvenienced by that. Like I have to be able to be like, okay, I understand where you're coming from. It's completely different. And maybe it changes the way that I do things or it changes the way that like, I need to put a timeline on my life, but like, I've chosen to be with you. So like this person has chosen to be with you. You know what I mean? Like they're not going to be able to divorce you from your Indian culture. That is one thing. But I think a lot of people do do that. I know. And you shouldn't. There's this idea of like, oh, but you're in America, (laughs) you know? Exactly. And so I think it like so many times when we share something with our partners, all that we care about is how our partners receive it because we are so afraid of being rejected. Right, right, right. But I think we have to take a lot of the power back and be like, I am also, this is also an opportunity for me to appraise you, my partner, and to see how you, my partner, respond to this information. And then Mm -hmm. I get to decide if I like your response. Like it's not, it's not all one way with the power. Like these big conversations, even though you're the one being vulnerable and you're the one sharing your background and your culture, you very much get to be an active participant. And if whether or not you like their response, you know, like you said, we're in America. And I think sometimes people do just, they think they're being progressive or they're being like great by being like, well, I just see you as a person or like, I don't see it right. Or like, I don't see, and like you and your culture are one. Clearly it is very important to you. It, it's irrelevant that we're in America. It's irrelevant that like this person is just like, well, you're an individual. And it's like, right. But individuals are made up of increments of background, culture, what's important to them, values, family, parents, you know, siblings, friends, like all kinds of stuff. And so like, if this person doesn't see you as like a complete human being with all these different things than what they've experienced, just because you're both in the same country, like, Allison's right. You get to respond to that and you get to think, does this, is this the right person for me? And another big thing to look out for is like, do they understand your values? So like Mm. if their reaction is like, well, but if this is us, this is me and you, like we get to make our own rules. Like who cares what your family thinks? (laughs) Like if you're dealing with somebody who who does like a, who cares what your family thinks when you come from a culture where you do, where you do care what your family thinks. And you can't just be like, fuck off, mom and dad. And like, mm-hmm, you know, like, mm-hmm. that's not how you were raised. That's not how you act. That's not how your family operates. Like, you need to be with somebody who understands that and who understands that, like, familial expectations don't mean that, like, you're not an individual and like this right, American right, right. version of it. It just means right. that this is the type of culture that you are from and you consider your family's feelings. Also, Americans love to say that or portray other cultures that way. And then like how many like families do we have that are just like, if you don't play football, you're dead to me. Like we have so like we act like we are so above or whatever. And then like it's, you know, it, it's like there's exactly the same sort of fresh familial whatever yeah i mean you have they have to understand your greater context yeah but i mean it's tough like because it's one of those things where i think what's more important than like getting a definitive answer on this marriage number right Right, now right right is like how do they respond when you give them this information right like you're never gonna get i think like you guys are really young you're not even if someone says i'll marry you at 26 who knows if that's true that's a cold comfort you're never going to know if they're if they might mean it at the moment, not mean it later. It, there's no guarantees. You can't go about life with guarantees like that. But you're right. Allison's right. You can see how they respond to you saying, I need you to be open to my culture. And if they say, I'm sorry, but it's 30 or nothing for me. Deal with it. Right. Like, you just don't want to be with somebody that's that rigid to begin with, you know, right. like if you're even though you're young, if you're building this life partnership with somebody a big part of building Mm -hmm. a partnership is taking into consideration this other person. Right. And so if, if your partner's idea of life is just, I'm going to go about my life and do my life the way exactly I want to do it. And then my partner will just happen, happen to want all the exact same (laughs) things as me, you know, that's unrealistic. And that's, that's not a partnership that's steamrolling. And maybe then the, the compromise down the road later, long compromise is, 28 and a half. You know what I mean? 
Like everyone needs to, everyone needs to give and take. You can't predict any of that now. Who right, knows? Right now, the information that you can gather is how they respond to this conversation. Right, right, right. Is is if and if their reaction could very well be, oh well, I don't want that in my life, and then they might end up ending the relationship, mm-hmm. and that would be terrible. But it would also mean that you were in the wrong relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and look, I've been there. <laughs> You know, like somebody can be really great in the moment and it can feel like you can't imagine your life without them. But 100% you can have a life without them. 